Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements. This is patch 2.1.2, which I'm calling the smoothening. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, I posted up a forum post asking people to talk balance with me. Uh, I wanted to get some feedback on how Sim Settlements plays out. What is the early game? mid game and late game feel like uh, in the context of a new playthrough uh, because one of the sacrifices I make by developing at such a rapid pace is that I don't get a lot of time to play the mod myself so I don't want to lose focus of how it actually plays out so I'm trying to get some uh, useful feedback on how things how things happen in the mod and uh, what it actually feels like to play it from your perspective. So any of you who are interested in joining in on that conversation, it will have an impact on the balance of some settlements in the future, and it already has its first impact in this patch. I will link that specific thread below, and you can uh, join us and converse in that, and we'll continue that discussion and try and smooth out more of some settlements. So when I say smooth out, what I mean is I've kind of laid out in that post how I envisioned Sim Settlements simulating things, what I envisioned this was supposed to do, and people are making suggestions to get closer to that goal. So one of the points where it came out that it fell short is that uh, you end up having to do too much turret and generator spam in the early game, uh, and that was definitely not intended. The goal of Sim Settlements early was to kind of simulate a struggling group of people who are just barely making it, uh, which is why things like the food are so low. So to help with that, uh, here are some of the changes that I've made uh, to try to steer us in the direction of getting uh, a smoother gameplay experience that doesn't feel so forced uh, and that you have a little more wiggle room with. And those are as following. So with residential plots, they no longer reduce your defense at level one. The defense reductions don't start until level two of residential. The next big change, uh, and this is probably the biggest as far as balance is concerned, uh, is that aside from the advanced industrial plots, none of the level one buildings require power. So you'll still need to give them power in order to make them eligible to uh, go beyond level one. Uh, but the level one requirement as far as getting access to benefits is no longer there. So things like martial plots will still provide defense if you don't have power. Things like uh, recreational plots will still pro provide happiness if you don't have power. Some of those things were obvious and they should have been done that way in the first place. Um, but then some others are a little less obvious with the benefits, um, such as the benefits provided by VIPs. Some of them would provide little tiny benefits and those would end up being turned off unless you had power. And all of these things, this is, it's a partly a bug fix because that should have been that way from the, from the get go. Um, but it's also uh, a balance in the sense that uh, it does require me to retool some of the numbers to get it uh, correct. But that should make it so that you can kind of control the speed your settlement levels by kind of withholding electricity until you feel like you're ready for things to start going up to level two. You'll notice that none of the buildings have lights at level one because this was kind of my, my thought all along was that you didn't need to have power at level one. But because I have no control over the UI, for example, you'll see that they have the power icon on them I can't really take that away and still allow them to be powered uh, so the to avoid the distraction of that uh, power icon uh, I'm telling you now and I'm and unfortunately the only way to get that point across is going to be uh, through pop-up messages and stuff so I'm gonna start by delivering that message in this video uh, I'll get it on the wiki and then uh, in the future I may add something in the game to explain the fact that power is kind of optional until you're ready to get these buildings to level 2 so now the gameplay uh, matches that kind of goal so power should be less of an issue early defense should be less of an issue early now the other big change I've made is something uh, to help out those of you who don't enjoy the dynamic needs system and that's that turning off dynamic needs uh, will now only turn off the penalties it will not turn off the benefits so uh, I know I get a lot of bug reports on the power plants not providing any power uh, and that's because you had dynamic needs off so now those are separated so all bonuses are considered uh, just they, they happen no matter what and then only penalties are considered part of the dynamic needs system so keep in mind if you're considering turning it off that a lot of the benefits are based around the dynamic needs system having the penalties as well for example having one settler produce 12 food from 
a level three farm uh, is way overpowered unless you have dynamic needs on, which causes more of a food need. So uh, if you're turning it off, know that you're going to gain quite the power increase uh, in what your settlers can produce, but it will allow you to take advantage of all the buildings without having to deal with any of those penalties that require you to constantly be uh, upgrading and adding more power, water, and food, etc., to your settlement. Um, so now you have that option. If you don't like the dynamic needs, you can turn it off and still take advantage of some of the cool new buildings in Industrial Revolution. All right, and now I added one feature to this patch that I want to show you guys. So one of the things that I'm also trying to do, aside from smooth out gameplay and the sense of balance, uh, is I want to make the, the whole process more immersive and more intuitive uh, and even more integrated with the rest of the game so it doesn't feel like you're playing two separate games as much. Uh, and one of the ways I felt like I always got pulled out when I'm playing some settlements is all of those damn pop-up messages. Now, originally those were put in, and I haven't taken them away. I think that those are some people like them, and I don't want to take those away from you guys, so they're still there. Um, personally, I have turned them off because of this new feature that I've added. So if you go into the Tools section, you will find that you now have a Tracking Options. So what this does is adds a quest to your Pip-Boy that will track plots and show you where specific things are occurring. So if you want to turn off those notifications, or even if you want to leave them on but have specific markers to show you the plots that have recently changed, you now have that option. So for me, it was uh, I find it perfect to turn off all notifications, turn on these options, and then I can just periodically check without having message spam while I'm out adventuring. Uh, I still can just quickly check my pit point and see exactly where it is I should go uh, to check out plots that need my attention. So there are four options in these tracking on this tracking screen. The first is plots awaiting upgrades. Now, if you have um, uh, manual upgrades turned on at all, uh, when you first start up the holotape on a new playthrough, this will turn on automatically. For everybody right now, the two options that you see on, as soon as you load this patch, these options are going to turn on because I assume most of you are going to want them uh, because I have been encouraging everyone to play with advanced upgrades on manual. Uh, but if you don't want those on and you want that your Pip-Boy uh, quest log to be clear, you can just pop in here and turn those off. Uh, but for simplicity and because I know not everybody watches these videos, I thought it best to have the new feature enabled by default because uh, it adds a lot, I think, to the experience. It definitely makes it uh, so that it feels more a part of the game and something that you're checking on as opposed to being told to go look at it, which is what those pop-up messages were doing. Um, so the plots awaiting upgrades will show you plots that are ready for you to trigger their upgrade if you have manual turned on. If you don't have manual turned on, this really doesn't do anything. Uh, next is Unhappy Citizens, and this will show you the plots whose needs aren't met. So as your settlements uh, evolve and those dynamic needs kick in and your your different meters start falling below full, this will kind of let you see at a glance which ones are down. Uh, now I will tell you is that uh, after you come back to your settlement and you fill those bars, uh, the Unhappy Citizens icons won't go away until after you leave again. Uh, that was done for to save processing time because otherwise having to double check the status of a plot every time you built any workshop item would uh, would just wreak havoc on your system. Now, if I find a way to do that more efficiently, I will because I would like this to upgrade in real update in real time. But just know that uh, if unhappy citizens doesn't go away after you fill your meters, as soon as you leave the settlement uh, and get far enough away, it will update. All right, now the next two are basically the same thing. They just work slightly differently. So both of these will show you uh, plots that have recently been built their first to the first level or have upgraded uh, to a higher level. The difference is that new construction, those markers will stay there until you visit and leave that settlement next. And recent construction will clear themselves automatically after an hour. So you can use both if you want. Um, by default, just new construction is on so that you can quickly find the plots and make sure you get a chance to check all of the different up, uh, upgrade levels out before those notices go away. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like on the map because I set up uh, a bunch of random plots and you'll just see that there'll be little markers just like any other quest icon um, and they say new construction or they'll say exactly what was listed in there. So these say new construction. If they were an upgrade, they would say up waiting upgrade, etc. Now you'll see on here, I added a new section called city manager tracking. You can turn that off to get rid of those markers. Uh, and if you turn off the options in the holotape, this uh, quest, all of these uh, objectives will go away and get cleared out. So if you don't like having a bunch of extra quests in there, you can easily turn this 
off. Uh, and the reason I did it as its own quest rather than miscellaneous is I felt like in order to make this extremely useful to where you could turn it on and off quickly, uh, it was better that you didn't have to come down to miscellaneous and then scroll through the big list of them. Uh, whereas while it's in its own quest, it should stay easy to find. Um, I, I know this, I don't believe this is alphabetical. I believe it's based on the order you get them, uh, which is unfortunate. I can't force it up to the top, um, but uh, it will still be easier to find than if you had to dig through miscellaneous because the more and more of those you collect, the further down that list would go. So then you'd have to be climbing down two lists. So uh, hopefully uh, no one will mind that since it can be turned off, uh, but I really felt like its own quest made the most sense. All right, guys, as always, please check out the patch notes. There are a lot of little changes, uh, and I would encourage everybody who uh, is interested in the gameplay aspect of Sims Elements, that whole balancing thing of figuring out the right plots, uh, to join us on that thread. I'm going to link below and give us your thoughts on the balance of Sims Elements, how the numbers play out, um, so that we can get this system all in a nice spot uh, that feels natural and not too overpowered. All right, guys, take care and enjoy the mod.